All right, Mitras, 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 and some Quinn. <laughs> Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Justin. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Yes, I am trying something new today. It's a uh, Pyramid Apricot Ale, and this is my second one, and it's delicious so far. All right, all right, today's topic is gonna be everything Mitres. I know, I'm not even saying that right, right? I'm sure a lot of you out there are looking for a good multimeter, DVOM, some kind of circuit tester to be able to test things on an automobile or maybe your house. So we're going to talk about that today because there are so many different types of meters out there. It can be quite challenging to find the meter that's right for you. All right, so we're going to talk about it. First things first, uh, I did go to Harbor Freight and I'll put a little clip down here. And I did see the Ames meters that they had and they looked a lot like my Klein. Okay, I've got a couple of different Kleins here at the house. They do share a lot of similarities to the Klein. But uh, me being a Klein fanatic, okay, because outside of Snap-on, I only trust one other company when it comes to a circuit tester, and that's my Klein, which is why I've got two of them. I've also given some away in the past as well. But that's neither here nor there. So I love me some Klein, especially when it comes to circuit testers. I got this one specifically for the house, and I have used it on an automobile until I was able to go back and pick one up that has true RMS that's for automobiles. We're gonna talk about some of the things this one that I bought for the house is lacking when it comes to automobile circuit testing. One of those things is you might not like where the leads are, they go in from the bottom, so if you were to drop it, it might land on these leads and mess things up, crush them, break them, etc. Overall, the meter's pretty tough, but what it was designed for really was an electrician or somebody that was doing some home handyman repair work where you could put the positive on one end, change your setting to whatever it was that you were looking for, fixate the other end or the calm or common ground on one point, and then start doing your testing down the panel. That's what it was actually designed for. Now, as far as my automotive use practices that I've used it for, I actually, and I don't use this part specifically because it's for alternating amperage, which in a car, not gonna find it. It's more for at-home use, like for household wiring. AC amps, house. DC amps, car. That's how I've been, that's how I was taught earlier the day, because I was asking about, I'm like, hey, do I really need to use DC amps? Like, when do you guys normally use it for? Parasitic draw testing. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I guess I should probably get another meter then and have one for the house when I'm doing automotive repair work in case I need to find a parasitic draw. So I bought the uh, Klein MM700. But I kept the CL600 because I actually do like the feature that it has right here. So if I was to flip this on, let's say I think it's voltage, and I press and hold this NCV, and I'll show you here in a clip, give me one second. All right, so here's your average wall socket. So if I was to put this end up to it, and I push and hold this, hang on. See the little red light that turns on. That just tells me that this circuit is hot. So I need to be able to flip the breaker off. So if I wanted to work on this panel specifically uh, and not get shocked, I'd have to flip the breaker off. All right, so I also used this specific meter on my buddy Aaron's pickup truck when we were testing it out for a bad PCM. Somebody said, is it fast enough? Can you really use that to gauge the voltage that you're seeing at the fuel injector? Yeah, I think so. It's a pretty fast multimeter for what it is. It's also true RMS. We're gonna get into that a little bit. I can share the definition with you down in the description. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. But the thing that I was taught when I was messing around with multimeters, especially when I was younger and had to refresh my memory today, is that the true RMS is gonna be a much faster paced pickup because what this DVOM or multimeter is capable of doing is giving you a rough average of what it's actually seeing. So it's not very fast as far as like a scope is concerned. You cannot compare a lab scope to a multimeter. Obviously the lab scope's gonna help you to catch those little intermittent glitches that happen or occur within a circuit. You're not gonna see that here. It's gonna give you the rough average of what it's seeing. But what it can do is it can give you continuity testing. So if you were to, uh, we'll set this on continuity, put the two leads together, I've got a complete circuit, right? So 
That pretty much tells me that everything from point A to point B is intact. I don't have any opens. So that's a good feature to have on something. And you can switch it over to ohms if you're looking for a specific ohm measurement or some kind of resistance reading that you're looking for specifically. We can also still do volts DC and volts AC, uh, but you can only do AC amps. So again, not really meant for cars, so you can't test DC amperage. That's where you want to get a multimeter like this. Now this is the new Klein MM700. It's an auto ranging, true RMS meter that I was able to pick up for 100 bucks from Home Depot. One of the other features that I like about this one specifically is that they make everything super easy and accessible. Two AAA batteries and both of your fuses for your uh, meter are in the back. So if one of them blows, easily changeable. So I like that feature. I really like Klein, I do. All right, so I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit here. So if I was to switch this over to volts, you could see that uh, it's kind of grayed out, right? Really hard to see, but if I was to press and hold this button, it gives us a nice little backlight. So if you're working in a dark area, you can at least look over and see what it is that you're reading when you're trying to take a measurement. Now, one of those things that might be a little bit beneficial to some people that have a hard time seeing might be to step it up to something like this snap-on of mine. Now this is the one I keep at work and I bought this on eBay for 150 bucks, I think. I'll throw a card up here in the corner, you guys can check it out as far as what to look for when you're buying used tools on eBay. But the guy showed in a picture that it worked and I was actually quite impressed with the background. You'll notice that everything is very well lit and it has a bunch of different colors. That might make it even easier for you to see in darkened areas. So if you're underneath a dash, or you're doing some stuff inside of a car, or you're just in a dark shop in general, that's gonna be kind of a nice feature to have. And look, it cost me all of $50 more than the Klein did. Now, one of the things that I didn't like about the Klein meter that I picked up, and this has been my biggest complaint with it so far, but they kind of make up for it, is in the bag in your little accessory kit, they do give you the temperature or thermometer probe or what have you, but they're test leads that they give you. Not the best, okay, because you slide these little things off and there's no threads on it, and then you take the little uh, clips they give you, there's no threads on the inside, so you slide it in, like so, and you just hope you're making good contact. This thing wiggles all the way around. It's extremely difficult, especially if you're underneath the car and you're attached to a ground. It can be flimsy, it's not making good contact. Next thing you know, your readings are all over the place. What's an easy fix for that? Well, I actually picked up a different set of test leads, also at Home Depot from Klein. I think they were like 17 or 18 bucks. One of the things that I wanna recommend before I talk about the added benefit of this is that you want to make sure that it's rated for the same exact meter that you're using it on or the same exact voltage or parameters that you will be using it on. So this is CAT3 rated, not CAT4, CAT3. We're gonna talk about that here in a minute. But they did sell you an entirely different set of leads that happen to be a little bit longer and you can't just pull the top off anymore. You have to actually unthread it, take your little dealio here, screw it on, and now when I go to clamp it onto a ground, that baby is secured. I am making contact. So I can very comfortably be aware that the voltage and the ohms or the resistance that I'm checking for is gonna be there. So for an extra 18 bucks, it's a nice upgrade. So if you have a climb meter, you don't like your test leads, you might go back to Home Depot, pick a setup, and I'm gonna show you why here in a second. Now, I ended up picking those up from Home Depot for fairly inexpensive. One of my biggest complaints was like, for instance, this is a power probe meter and they come standard with the thread on adapters. Same thing that I had with the Snap-on. Snap-on came with the threaded adapters. However, some of the other meters that I've seen made by other companies come with the same style that the original Klein came with. Just a real cheap, generic style that you just slide and hope for the best, not the best. Anyways, this multimeter is made by Power Probe. This is Joey's multimeter. He actually upgraded to this from this little tiny Fluke. This is the Fluke 16 multimeter. These are both auto-ranging multimeters. Every digital voltmeter that I'm showing you here today is all auto-ranging. Now they do make some uh, multimeters that you'll find at the auto supply store that are manual range, so you have to actually set it if you want millivolts or you want voltage or you want milliamps or you want amps, you know, you have to like change it and you have to give it the parameter that you're looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, you might as well go with an auto-ranging because 
Well, it just dumps things down for those of us that need, uh, you know, give me, give it to me in layman's terms. You know, do I have it or do I not? And what's it at? Let me, let me know. <laughs> so at any rate, go with an auto ranging one. You're going to be much more happier with that. Some people like manually selecting what it is that they're looking for. I personally don't. I want something that's automatic. Shane has this Fluke DVOM, and this is a 774 Fluke. He's had it for about seven or eight years now. Absolutely loves it has had no issues with it. Uh, the backlight, not so great. So again, on this, if I press and hold this little button, it gives me this little green light on the side. Uh, not the brightest multimeter in the world, but he's had it for a long time and it keeps on holding up. Unfortunately for Joey, his little fluke meter here burnt out, was giving him false readings. He had to upgrade, so he keeps it in the drawer in case he ever decides to actually mail it back to Fluke, see if they can fix it, as long as it's within a reasonable price range. Uh, but from as for where's, as far as where he bought it from, I don't exactly know. Uh, I just know that there was a reason why he dumped this and went to this. So he's been very happy with his power probe multimeter and he's our Diag guy. So. My boss also has a Fluke, but it's a very high cat rating for um, hybrids. So if you wanted to test specifically hybrid battery cells or something like that, you're going to want a meter that has a very high cat rating because of those higher voltage readings that you're going to see when it comes to hybrids. Now I believe, and I might be wrong, but I believe my Klein DVLM and my Snap-on can test hybrids. Not entirely sure, don't quote me, somebody can correct me down in the comments, but my Snap-on is rated up to Cat 3, which is 600 volts AC and DC. The Klein that I picked up is rated Cat 3 for 1,000 volts uh, DC, it looks like. And Cat 4, let's see, where's the little booklet? It'll tell me. So 1,000 volts alternating current, 10 amps of alternating current, and then 40 mega ohms. So that seems like a pretty high rating to me. So it has both Cat 3 and Cat 4 ratings on this uh, auto ranging true RMS meter. And the Snap-on one is Cat 3 and Cat 2. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what Cat reading his hybrid fluke tester is, but he loves it. So if you're testing hybrids or you're going to be testing hybrids, you need to spend a bunch of extra money, like let's say almost 200, 250 bucks. Yeah, the higher the cat rating, the more expensive your multimeter is going to be. Also, depending on name brand. Whereas, like, if you get a snap on our flute, going to be up there in price. Covering one more item before we wrap this video up. Speed, okay? Everyone was questioning me about the speed. Could this keep up with checking, you know, voltage? Yeah, I believe it can because it's true RMS. I'm only checking for control side and I'm only checking for power and ground, power and ground, power and ground, continuity, okay? I'm not using it as a lab scope, so I don't need to see intermittent glitches in it just yet, but I wanna know if it has power, if it has ground. If it does, I'm good. If I don't, I'm missing something, now I gotta start doing continuity tests. And that's why I thought the computer might be bad. But we'll see, I haven't heard from Aaron in about a week, so I don't know if he's planning on making an appointment to come in to get that checked out. But look, what kind of multimeters do you guys use? What's been your go-to company? What kind of cat rating do you typically fall in? Are you looking for something that's a little bit more advanced? Or you want something that's way on the high-end side? Because I know you can buy these cheaper meters from uh, not just Harbor Freight, but from like AutoZone and O'Reilly's. They have some of the on-the-wall ones. Look for down and dirty testing on the side of the road. Paying 15 to 20 bucks for a meter that you can toss in your glove box and just check quick voltage and uh, resistance, boom, 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 you're done. Those ones seem to work pretty good. My boss actually picked one up on the fly. When he was at his other house, he had to do some testing on another vehicle. He didn't have any of his tools with him, i.e. his fluke hybrid meter. So he had to get something on the fly, didn't want to spend a bunch of money, ended up picking one up from the auto supply store for like 20 bucks. It did what it needed to do. It told him that the alternator was charging or not, and then he was done. So something like that can most certainly be very beneficial to those of you that are DIY guys or weekend warriors. Those of you that want to get into more of the uh, higher end testing and you want to become 
super duper diagnosticians or you want to start testing hybrids, yeah, you're probably going to have to buy a, a much more expensive meter. But let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this. What kind of meters do you like or use currently? Uh, do you have one of these amp clamp style ones for the house and do you often use it on automotive as well? How many times have you actually really used uh, DC amperage for parasitic draw testing or are you pretty much just checking for AC DC volts and continuity? That's what I want to know. Thanks as always for watching. Cheers to those of you that have your beers and I hope you enjoy the rest of your work week. Happy Memorial Day, especially to all my fallen soldiers and veterans out there. Cheers.